morning. Thank you for joining us. As always, we thank and praise God for his many wonderful blessings. We certainly thank God for you allowing us to come into your homes and share with you from his holy word. I am Dr. McLeod, I'm Lord Dr. Dance, and of course you know this is Sunrise Sunday School. And we have another outstanding lesson we're going to share with you on this morning. But as always, before we go into our lesson, we're going to give you an opportunity to get your Bible, Sunday School book, pen and paper. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. As always, before we go into our study period, we're going to invoke God's blessings upon us. Dr. Dance, would you pray for us, please? Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you, Lord. We magnify your high and holy name. We appreciate you and all that you do for us, O oh God. And the opportunity we have again today to be used of you, O oh God. Speak through us to your people. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, and I made up mind, Lord, to apply your word in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, we thank God for all things. And again, we certainly thank God for you allowing us to come into your homes and share with you. We kind of play a serious uh, honor that you've allowed us to come into your home. We don't take it for granted. But we know that you could be doing any and everything that you chose to be with us, and we thank you for it on this morning. We're going to study again from the book of Acts. We get in the book of Acts, and we're at the 17 chapter verses 1 through 4, 10 through 12, 22 through 25, and also the 28th verse on this morning. And our lesson on this morning is Thessalonica, Vera, and Athens. Like how you feel about this one? Well, there again, you know, <laughs> there's so much we can learn, and I trust that we do learn when we look at these things, uh, because it seems that what happened with Paul happens to us also. Yes. I think sometimes we look past that and we don't take into account. But seeing uh, the situations he finds himself in and how he goes through those situations to bring glory down unto God, mm -hmm. it helps us in situations that we face also. And yes. there are things that, uh, that that we're called to do, that we're responsible in doing, and we just have to find the right way to get it done. Yes. Everybody's not going to accept us right away, mm -hmm. firsthand. We got to find ways to, to, to bring the word in such a way that they can accept it, mm -hmm. or if they reject it, it's not because uh, we didn't present it in the right way. Right. So I think here with Paul, going there in these places and, and how he went about uh, attracting people, drawing people to Christ, it helps us mm -hmm. in our efforts to do the same thing. That is true, and, and I think I've you know it's also for me to to realize that even though God sent you to do something. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that it's going to be without opposition. That's right. That's you right. Know, we, we have a tendency to believe, well, the Lord said he's going to do it, so he's going to make a way. He sent me to do it, and everything's going to be all right. But that is not the case. we got to keep in mind that Satan's job, he's on his job, and his intent is to destroy everything that God has planned for all That's mankind. That's right. That's right. So he's going to do everything he can to destroy. But uh, as Dr. Dance has already said, you know, we, we have some difficult times ahead of us. When we go forth, and when we think that we should be received, uh, it seems like that is the time when the enemy poses the most threat to us. That's right. But we got to keep in mind that we're doing work for the Lord, and that God knows exactly what we're going through, and we just have to be steadfast in that. You know, and even when there is a great deal of rejection, it doesn't mean that everything, everyone rejected you. Right. We can go, like you said, we fight through these situations, not fight physically, but we fight through these situations to present the Word of God, and we go away sometimes a little dejected, sometimes somewhat disappointed because we think we didn't get the message over, but then you don't know those who did hear. Right. Those right. who did receive and accept it. Right. And then because of their acceptance of it, what they will do with it from that point on. Mm -hmm. And as we've said many times here on this program, that God says that some plant, some water, but yes. he's the only one that yes. can give the increase. So even though we feel rejected, our job is to present the message. Yes. It's to present Christ. And then what people do with it is on them. Yes. Because we never know how many Nicodemus we might have. That's right. Them, That's know. right. And here it's been afraid to come forth, you know, because of fear of others and fear pressure or whatever. But uh, as you pointed out, the seeds have been planted and then somebody has come along and, and that they may later find a way they can circumvent their plans right. And, right. and find out exactly what's going on. So we have to stay encouraged. That's right. And, you know, and even, you know, with a Gamaliel, mm -hmm. who may be a member of those councils or that society, but has heard the word of God and now defends those who will 
proclaim the word of God. So like you say, we, you know, there's going to be opposition. There's not every, it's not going to be a, a flower bed of bees all the time. There's going to be some ease in it, but there's going to be some difficulty sometimes too. Yes. But we have to uh, find a way to not, um, our attitude, uh, the way we present it shouldn't be in such a way that we turn people away yes. when it draws people to Christ. And, and, and that, that is something that I think that we need to look at. You know, we, we need to keep this gospel uh, as inviting as we possibly right. can. Right. Um, so many times we, 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 we bombard people with the Just long list. Them, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with the long list, thou can't mm-hmm. do this, thou <laughs> shall not do this, that, and the other. You know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, before we could even start talking about how much Jesus loves us, we, we, we turn the people off already. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> people don't want to hear. But uh, again, we, we're studying from uh, the Thessalonica, Bureau, and Athens, and. Uh, of course, as always, your um, study material might read a little different from ours, but we know that God is going to bless us to come to that uh, expected end. So we want to encourage you to continue to study out of material that you're comfortable with. That's right. The 17th chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 4, also verses 10 through 12, and also verses 22 through 25, and finally, verse 28. Dr. Dance, would you read for us, please? Verse 1. And when they had passed through Amphipolis, and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great number, and of the chief women not a few. Verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. The, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. Verse 22. And Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of, of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Verse 28, and in him we live and move and have our being, as, as certain also of you all, your own ports have said, but we also have offspring. All right, God bless you and thank God for the reading of his word. And as we have stated earlier, you know, when the time comes for the Lord sent us somewhere, you know, it, it might not be an easy journey to get there, and it certainly might not be well received when we do get where the Lord is sending us. That's right. But we, we have to be of a ready mind. We have to be of a made of our mind and heart uh, to do what God has given us to do. And and we also, Dr. Des, need to be encouraged, and I think you alluded to it earlier, that regardless of what the opposition might hold for us, there is somebody That's right. there God has intended to receive the word. That's right. Uh, even though they might be within their traditional setting and, mm-hmm. and, and cannot acknowledge uh, that they believe or that they receive the word of God, uh, but yet somebody there is going to hear it and somebody there is going to receive it. And just as Jesus did with the Samaritan woman, that one individual can go forth and convert an entire city or entire That's city, right. or whatever the case may be. So we have to stay in courage and do what God has given us to do, even when it seems like it's impossible. And, and naturally Satan going to speak to us and say, well, it must not be of God, because <laughs> if it was of God... You wouldn't have all this opposition. You're right, exactly. <laughs> That's why you have all that opposition. Yeah, because you're doing the work of the law. <laughs> That's right. That is so true. <laughs> so again, he said, now when they had passed through Apophilius and Apollyon, that they came to Thessalonica, where was the synagogue of the Jews, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three seven days reasoned with them, out of the scripture. Now this is three weeks we're talking about here. Right. You know, that he talked with them and reasoned with them, opening in a legend that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preached unto you is Christ. And some of them believed, and consorted with Paul and Silas, and other devout Greeks, a great multitude, and other chief women not a few. You, you know, Dr. Dancer, when we when we're dealing with the natural mind, 
or the corner minded individuals um, to get them to perceive and to understand that there was life after death mm -hmm. and that a man who died on the cross is really your savior. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at the fact that if he was a savior, or if he did have this tremendous power, if he was God, why would he die on the cross? Right. You know. And and because of that, I think it's kind of difficult for the corner minded individual to receive the fact that this was your savior. They have no idea of the need for the sacrifice. Right. They have no idea of the they, they have no concept of death having to be uh, swallowed up. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't realize that these things had to be done, but they can only see that this man died on the cross and was buried. Now, how right. do you expect, how you expect <laughs> me to believe he's going to save me? <laughs> you know, and, and I think that creates a problem for, for quite a few people. I, I think it does because, you know, we, we, we all, all, none of us who have experienced death having the respect for death. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And as you say, death was the only payment God could receive or would receive yes. as payment for humanity's sin. Someone had to die. Yes. And the one who did the dying had to be one who was not controlled by or conquered by sin preceding yes. his death. And the only one that was was Christ. Mm -hmm. And then in dying, he didn't stay dead. He conquered death. Yes. And that he, he died and got up. He had yes. power to get up out of death. And when he when he was risen from the grave, as we said here many times, it's not just the death of Christ, but the resurrection of Christ yes, too yes. that brings about our salvation. Yes. By being raised, now he justifies us. He mm -hmm. lets us know that I paid the debt for your sin, so no one can charge you. Well, they can charge you, but the charges don't mean anything. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> because the, 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 the debt's been paid for by me. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said, it's difficult for people who don't know Christ or have a relationship with Christ to accept that or believe that. But that was the plan. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was the plan that. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Adam sinned and therefore had to die. Yes. But his dying, physical death, couldn't pay for anything. That's true. Someone's got to pay this debt off now. That is true. That is true. And and, mm -hmm. and with that death, you know, there was a need for Jesus to enter into that spiritual realm. Right. Because there was those who were held captive in the spiritual realm that Jesus had to set free. That believed. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That exactly. had faith. Exactly. Exactly. So he had to to enter into death and not enter into that particular realm uh, to preach to them also. Uh, as it spoke of in the book of Hebrews, they all died not receiving the promise. Not receiving the promise, but right. they believed, as you pointed out, so he had to go down there and preach to them as well and then lead them out uh, also. So these are some of the things that, that we need to be studious about so that we can, uh, can uh, express them and explain them and explain it in a, in a manner in which they can understand. They need to know about the, the, the need for the sacrifice. They need to know about the need for untainted and pure blood. Right. You know, they need to know about the, how do he need, had to become a perpetuation for God. And now God is a just God, so he required a blood sacrifice. All of these things need to be explained to individuals. Right. When yet going on to them to us. And he's to paid that debt. Yes. It's paid off now. It's paid off. He didn't, it, it, was, it wasn't on the, uh, as we, back in our day, the wheel call plan. <laughs> he didn't pay on it. He paid it off. Yes. yes. And, and people need to understand, too, as you're saying, you know, you can't wait until you die physically mm -hmm. for someone to try to rescue you yeah. at that point. That's true. There's something you got to do before physical death comes. Yes. So those of you listening this morning, if, if, if you haven't gotten into a relationship with God through faith in Christ Jesus and you die physically, it's too late. Yes, yes, yes it's too late now. You know, right. Jesus went and preached to those that was in the spirit. He entered paradise when he went down. There. So it's, 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 it's that's that's right. right. And, and there's no paradise no. now. <laughs> it's either heaven or hell. <laughs> and everybody who died prior to that uh, are not the ones he preached to. There were those who, who were, were, were basically condemned yes. at their death because they didn't believe. Yes. And, and they're, they're still there. Yes. They're going to be there. They're going to be there. <laughs> until, until it's emptied into the lake of fire. Yes, exactly. So, so people need to understand, you need to understand today, you know, that, okay, I messed up, I, I blew it, I died now, and someone can light a few candles and pray a prayer. No, it's not going to work. No. It's no. something you got to get right before yes, that takes yes, place. Yes, you got to do your part. Now, see, and what, that, what Dr. Dance was speaking about earlier is that there was a sin that was against you. Mm -hmm. There was a strike against you from the very beginning. From the day you were born, you had a strike against you because of what Adam did. That's right. Now, Jesus took that strike away. That sin that was held against you has been diminished. The great minds demolished. That's it's right. gone. Jesus took care of that. But only in Christ Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> only in Christ. Now, there's, there's nothing that you did. And grandmama's <laughs> prayers and nobody else's prayers did this. And Mohammed and Buddha and nobody else can do anything for you. It's only in yeah, Christ only Jesus. Only in Christ. Sun, young moon, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but you have to understand that all of the sin 
that was against you from that point backwards. It's gone. That's, that's over. Mm -hmm. Now what you do now would determine where you would spend eternity from this point on. And that is from, from the day of Christ's sacrifice on develop, uh, it's going to determine where you spend now uh, eternal right. life. So you have to get right with God. As Dr. Dancer may mention, you, you've got to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. You've got to believe that he died for your sin, was buried according to the scripture, rose again on the third day, and now sitting on the right hand of the throne of God. You need to believe that and believe it with the intent of living a life that verifies That's the fact right. that you believe That's right. in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And God realized that you cannot do that in the flesh, so therefore he has provided a way for you to even do that. You can conquer flesh if you will allow the Spirit of the Lord to baptize you and to give you the new birth that you heard so much of talk about. Some of you might hear it talked about as a conversion, right. uh, whatever the case may be, but it means the same thing. And, and when the Lord has accomplished that task in your life, then you have the ability to say no to you, to keep you under That's right. That's right. You have the ability <laughs> now not to do the things that you were doing before that are bringing damnation upon your soul. You now can walk into victory because of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, again, we're looking at how Paul uh, went into uh, um, Apollyon and uh, he was preaching unto them. Mm -hmm. And the third verse says, Open the legend that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. Which we just talked about Jesus, this. Yes. Whom I preached unto you is this Christ. Okay. He also said, Now, and some of them believe, mm -hmm. and so with Paul and Silas and other devout Greeks, a, a great multitude, and other chief women, not a few. This is what we just covered. Mm -hmm. Ten verse says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto burial, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now that's that opposition you were talking about. Yes, yes, he's <laughs> trying to kill him in there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> These were more noble than those of Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily where, whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. One of the things that we want to, to, to bear in mind, as, as Dr. Nelson made mention earlier, there was some oppositions there. Mm -hmm. And God bless Paul. He had somebody there in the camp that was going to help Paul do whatever he had to do, help him along his way. And they did so with Paul in this particular case. And when uh, Paul was able to go forth and do the things that the other God had sent him to do, these people, these mm -hmm. people were more notable mm -hmm. than the Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. The Thessalonians, I everyone to pronounce it. They <laughs> searched the scriptures. <laughs> and that's something that I encourage. Everyone, which we do. encourage everyone to do. That's right. Yes, everyone. <clears throat> you need to search the scriptures. You do not need to receive anything and everything that somebody come preaching to you. Not unless I'm not talking about your pastor, because with, with your pastor you're supposed to know them to lay them among you. That's right. So you That's already right. know your pastor is a true man of God. But uh, when when others come, when you see these revivals and and uh, your TV evangelists <laughs> and all these different things, you know you you, you shouldn't receive that readily. Uh, everything that people is preaching to you. That's right. <laughs> you need to get your Bible out and you need to prayerfully search these things and see if what they're teaching and what they're preaching is true and not just in the Word of God but in the will of God because many times these, these, these smooth talkers can <laughs> take the Word of God. <laughs> Put a little spin on it. <laughs> yeah, they, they twist it around. They, they got that gifted rhetoric and they'll put that in there and, and before you know it, you you mortgage off your house for somebody that... that uh, that's right. Not even saved. Okay. <laughs> you know, and it's, 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 it's simply trust but verify. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we're not saying everybody on the radio, everybody on TV, everybody comes along, you know, and just sips through the city. Is mm -hmm. is uh, intent is not honorable. Right. I think right. m more there are more honorable ones than not. I yes. really feel that they are. But even with the honorable ones, even with us, mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage you that when we're done today, that you sh you search the scripture. Yes. Yes. <laughs> to yes. ensure that what we're saying is is exactly. verifiable by the word of God. Exactly. And as a matter of fact, that's the reason why I asked you at the beginning of the program to get you a pen and That's right. So when we say something that you're not sure, write it down. That's right. And then contact us and let us explain it on there. Or we give you an address where you can come by the studio and we can explain it to you, whichever one is best for you. But we don't want you to just take our word for it. Contact us. Let us know you agree, you disagree, or you didn't thoroughly understand that, or what did you mean when you said this, that, or the other, and we'll be able to explain it to you. That's right. All right, second verse, the third part, 22nd verse, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill, 
and said, "Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious." As I remember verse, <laughs> for as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription: "To the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, Him declare I unto you." Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, and that's that's an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Not just then, but now, there are people that assume they're serving the true and living God mm -hmm. and don't really know him. No. Don't really know who he is. Don't 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 really know. I mean, you know, we talk about this confession mm -hmm. that you confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well just just to just to repeat some words doesn't yeah. put you in a right relationship with God through faith in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You need to know who yes. Jesus is. Yes. Yes. Used to sing a song, everybody ought to mm -hmm. know who Jesus is. He's a little bit of that, everybody more than story. We need to know who he is. Mm -hmm. There's no point in serving someone, giving your life to someone, yes. devoting all of your effort and time to someone that you don't even know. Yes. You should know him. And that's a part, again, of verifying the things that you have been taught or heard mm -hmm. to be true based on the word of God. Yes. yes. Not someone's thoughts or someone else's intentions or assumptions, mm -hmm. but based upon the word of God as provided to us by the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can't really... Get an understanding of God's word without God's spirit. Yeah, you can read it and think you understand it. When you are filled with God's spirit, he helps you then to understand. It stands in reason. If the spirit of the Lord wrote the scripture, it's going to take the spirit of the Lord to understand That's it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take the spirit of the Lord to understand. You're not going to understand this with the natural mind or the natural head. It's not going to happen. Yeah, no matter how studious you are, yeah. how, whatever you put forth. Yeah. Again, the Spirit of God wrote it, and you got you got to have his spirit, yes. the spirit of God abiding in you to help you yeah. to digest yes. and live according to mm -hmm. the word of God. Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen no other way. No, it, it doesn't matter where, who you are. It's not going to happen no other way. It's not going to happen overnight either. Oh, no. It's no, a no, lifelong no. thing. No, no, no. <laughs> no. If you don't go a few years here and get a degree or get a diploma, it's lifelong. <laughs> no, Lord. <laughs> Even Paul said, I come not myself to evaporate. <laughs> but this one thing I do. <laughs> I keep on. pressing. I keep pressing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look again at that, that twin verse. For I passed by and beheld your devotion. I found an altar with this inscription. To the unknown, unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship him, declare I un, unto you. And as Dr. Des was saying, you need to get to know him. That's right. That's uh, right. You, need to, you really need to get to know him. Not just by the book, by, by books is book smart. But uh, basically, in the part of your sin and by faith, uh, it, it know him intimately. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. I mean, mm -hmm. because when, yeah. when we talk about this, we talk about a personal relationship. Right. We're not talking about uh, joining the church or being a part of any right, group, right now. Right. Of congregation, the congregation. <clears throat> but we talk about getting to know him for yourself, a personal relationship with the Lord, and 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 then with that, we can understand. And Scripture teaches us. We said God is the Spirit. That's right. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We understand that. We we can get a fuller and more deeper understanding of what the scripture is teaching us. That's right. And I talked about faith. We, we worship the Lord through faith. And knowing that faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Many times we come to the Lord because we want to see something. <laughs> we want him to do something for us, deliver us from this bill or that bill or Oh, get us out of this hole yeah, so yeah, we can get yeah. back into another exactly. hole. Exactly. <laughs> touch my body. <laughs> <laughs> and then without faith, he says, it's impossible totally. to please God. <laughs> totally impossible. 24 verse. We're going to run out of time, Dr. Dennis. <laughs> God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelling not in temples we made with hands, mm -hmm. neither is worship with man's hand, men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he give it to all life and breath and all things. Isn't it amazing, Dr. Dazza, how we can take a statue, <laughs> we, can, we can create something out of our own vivid mindset, and, and, and pour cement or plaster, whatever the case may be, and shape it in any form, fashion that we want to shape it in, and set it on top of our mantle. <laughs> and we pray and worship this thing that we created. That's right. How do you <laughs> expect something that you created, something that you put on a mantle, to deliver you or, or, or to, to bless you or to 
uh, to encourage you when you created it yourself. To care for you yes. when you've got to care for it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It can't move, it can't talk, it can't do anything. You made it and now, oh, Jesus. And not just that, you know, we put too much confidence in, in these buildings and these organizations that oh, we're yes. a part of as well. Yes. And, and we're right. not saying that in a derogatory way, wherever you belong, mm -hmm. where the church God has sent you to, be faithful there. Yes. Be faithful. Do all you can do mm -hmm. to be a blessing there and to grow. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, it's kind of like Israel. They put more confidence in the temple yes, than in God. Yes, and God yes, had to show them it's not the temple. Allowed it to be, he allowed it to be, be torn down. Mm -hmm. Even though it was torn down and destroyed, God was still God. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Let them know he was going to die. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 28 verse, final verse said, For in him we live and move and have our beings, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Amen. We need to stop worshiping the creation and start worshiping the creator. Mm -hmm. We need to start acknowledging who Jesus is. We need to learn. We need to get a deeper understanding as to the great price sacrifice that was paid for your lives. We need to understand it is because of what Jesus has done that we now have a right to the tree of life and we need to understand that you now have a part to play. You know, and, and one thing, uh, you know, acknowledging who Jesus is, I think it's a key point when you said that. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging who Jesus is is not just saying it vocally. Oh, no. It's the life that we live. Yes, yes. And yes. not just when we're on the top. Mm -hmm. It's what we do when we're on the bottom. Yes. Day by day. Exactly. We really need to come to a place in life where we're acknowledging who Jesus that he is Lord. Yeah. He is not just Savior. He's Lord of our lives. Yes. And, yes. and uh, our, our goal, our purpose, our intent is to... Mm -hmm become as much like him as is humanly possible to become just like him. Mm -hmm. We want to walk like him, we want to talk like him, we want to think like him, mm -hmm. we want to do like he does. Right. And that's not an impossible task. No, we can not. do that. He, he equipped you to do that. He enabled you to do that's that. Right. Before it was impossible. That's right. But now he has made it possible for you to do these things. And, and I'm glad you pointed out this one thing as well, Dr. Desert. God is a God in the lion's den. He's a God that's in, right. in the, in the, in the <laughs> fire furnace. furnace. Mm -hmm. You know, he is God wherever you're at. He is still God. We know, and when we get to know him, as you and I know him, and, and as our viewers and us know him, then we can understand what we should, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. And, and in him we live. Yes. In him we move. Yes. In him we have our being. Exactly. Get your same loved one. Tell me come by the TV. Dr. Daz has something he's going to share with you. We'll be right back. If you would, please. Yes, we've said an awful lot this morning about the fact that we really need to know who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God. He's also the propitiation or the sacrifice that God accepted for as payment, sufficient payment for all of our sins. All the wrong that we had sinned got us in trouble with God. Jesus got, a, got us out of that trouble by paying that debt through his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And he presents to you today the opportunity to live eternally in God's presence through a relationship with him. As we said before, and we say it again now, it doesn't cost you anything. There's no labor involved in this. It isn't who you know or who you might have to know to get this done. All you have to do is believe what we have said. And as we said before, if you don't believe us, get your Bible out. Read the Bible. You'll see that what we're saying is true. Yes. And come to know who he is. Know that he is the one that God sent to deliver you from sin's power and from hell, eternity in hell. And all you have to do is to believe that. When you believe that, speak that with your mouth. Mm -hmm. Say, I believe this, Lord. I believe this, God, that Jesus is the one that you sent and that he's the one that came and paid the debt for my sin. Yes. And because of that, I accept that. I accept him as Savior, and I proclaim him as Lord in my life. And I invite you to come and live in me. And in living in me, forgive me of all of my sins, of all of my wrongs, and help me, Lord, to please you by the life that I live. It's a simple prayer. That's all it takes. If you do that and you're really serious about that, I guarantee you, he will save you, deliver you, and set you free. And at that point, you're not perfect. At that point, you're born again. You're brand new. You're starting over. It's going to take you getting involved in a Bible-believing church 
but they will teach you the word of God and help you to grow. They won't beat you up and beat you down, mm -hmm. but help you to grow and prosper in your walk with God and be everything that God would have you to be. Yes. Christ has paid the price. He did it for all of us. He loves us just that much. Nobody's excluded. Nobody was pushed away. No one was passed over or shoved aside. God loves every one of us that much. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do today, and I, I, I wouldn't leave. I, would, I wouldn't let this day pass without inviting Christ into my life. You can't lose anything by this. You can't go wrong by doing this. Invite him into your life. Yes. Be saved and live a life that's pleasing to him. God bless you, Dr. Dez. And as always, it is our prayer and our wish, our desire that you would prosper and be a good help, even as your soul prosper. God bless you on this morning. God bless you.